Hey Windowers, and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows Vista. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Windows Codename Longhorn Build 5112, a Beta 1 build from the 20th of July 2005. This build of Longhorn was made available to Microsoft Developer Network and TechNet subscribers, as well as a select group of Microsoft Vita testers on the 27th of July 2005 and was the first build of Longhorn to refer to itself by the operating system's final name, Windows Vista. Speaking about the choice of name, Microsoft co-president for platform products and services at the time, Jim Alchin, said that the name Vista creates the right imagery for this version of Windows' new capabilities. Compared with the last build made available to persons outside of Microsoft, build 5048 from three months earlier, Build 5112 saw drastic changes to the user interface, including the reintroduction of many pre-development reset functionalities such as virtual folders and parental controls. So, let's explore this build in a bit more detail, and let's start Windows Vista Beta 1. On first using this build of Longhorn, many changes are obvious when comparing it to build 5048. Firstly, the Windows welcome screen makes a return and is enabled by default, as you can see here. Now in build 5048, although I didn't show this, the welcome screen was present, but it was disabled by default. When enabled, it was identical to the Windows XP welcome screen. However, in build 5112, the welcome screen has a new design, as you can see here. Let's log in. Now once you're logged in, you'll see there's a new desktop wallpaper, however if you check, as usual, it's still called Bliss in the options here. Also, another thing I didn't show in build 5048 were the screensavers. Now you had these three screensavers. This one, which was known as Windows XP, was identical to the Windows XP logo screensaver. However, at this point, it's now just known as Windows and it displays the Windows Codename Longhorn logo instead of the XP logo. The visual styles in this build are slightly different. We still have this one known as Aero, although it looks different to the one in build 5048. It has the same name. We still have the Windows Classic theme and all its traditional recolors. However, there are no longer any Windows XP themes to choose from, so those visual styles have now been removed. Another thing noticeable on the desktop, and this is to be expected because this is a beta build, you have these options for bug reporting. So you have a help link how to report a bug, and it shows you this screen. So it says to report a problem, just download the problem reporting tool, which includes a feedback form. If you click on this link, now obviously it's not going to work, but this is still interesting because you have an early version of Internet Explorer 7 present in this build with tabbed browsing, complete with a really flashy little animated logo there. There's also a link on the desktop for install supplemental drivers. So it says this wizard will install drivers designed for Windows XP for display and networking devices on your computer that are not yet fully supported by Longhorn. And you can just click through this. It doesn't find any for this virtual machine. And lastly, you have a link to learn more about Avalon and Indigo. And it tells you a little bit about them here. In the start menu, we see a return of the user picture, which has been missing for quite a long time in the Longhorn builds. Now, I think the last time we saw it in the series was build 4051. The start menu also showcases some of the new icons available in this build, such as this control panel icon. Now, if you go to the start menu options, you'll notice a few differences again from build 5048. The first one is there's no longer an option to display a My Hardware link in the menu. Now remember, in build 5048 there was an option for this, although it didn't work anyway, so you couldn't display the link anyway, but there's no longer even an option anymore. There are also no longer any power MRU mode options, or indeed any power options in this menu. Now even though there is no longer an option for this in the start menu properties, in this build we now do have a functioning shutdown cancel dialog. Now there was an option for this in the start menu settings in build 5048, but it didn't work. In this build, we don't have the option, but we do have the cancel dialog. Another thing you should notice in the start menu is a return of this games link. Now again, in build 5048, there was an option to turn on the games link, but it didn't work anyway, so you couldn't turn on this option. And we now have a return of the games explorer, which we first saw in build 4015. 
Now there's an option here called parental controls and these were first seen around build 4008 which is quite a while ago now in Longhorn development and obviously pre-development reset but they're back by this point. They work more or less the same as before and it's really interesting because this feature was first seen in Windows codename Neptune all the way back in 1999 and it never made it into Windows XP. Now if you remember Neptune was meant to be the home version of Windows 2000 but it was cancelled in favour of Windows XP. So here we see a feature that was first seen in the 1990s. Now it says choose a user and set up parental controls. So if you choose a user you get this screen where you can set some different options. So you can turn on parental controls and activity reporting. You've got some settings here. You can choose can this user play games, yes or no. And which of these ESRB ratings are appropriate for this user. You also have an option for if a game has no rating, can the user play it? So you can allow or block. And also you have some specific options. You can block certain things such as, for example, any drug references. Games with drug references in will be blocked. If you want to, you can also block specific games. So these are all the games that are currently installed and you can choose per game which ones you want to be allowed or not. I think Spider Solitaire should be blocked. That's an awful game. Another feature that returns in this build is virtual folders. So if you choose one of these shell locations from the start menu, for example, let's go to pictures. In the breadcrumbs bar at the top here, you'll see it points to what's called virtual folder. And if you click on it, you get what are basically the libraries that ended up in Vista. So you have a pictures library, a music library, a video library, etc. And these virtual folders work in much the same way as the libraries and by this point WinFS had been cancelled or at least the prospect of WinFS being in the final version of Vista had been put aside. So that was known at this point that WinFS wouldn't make it into Vista, it, it was planned to be released later on. So these virtual folders are like a very slimmed down version of WinFS, they're like the bare bones of WinFS. And these did make it into the final version of Vista and are also present in Windows 7, 8, 8.1 and 10. Now let's go back into an Explorer window and look at the Explorer changes. Now in build 5048 you may remember that if you right clicked on a taskbar icon you got some options here for turning off some of the features in Explorer. So you could turn off the back and forward buttons for example. That feature is no longer present by this point. If you go to the computer folder, these drive space progress bars now have a slightly different design. They look a lot more Vista-esque for want of a better word. Another change in Explorer by Beta 1 is that there are no longer any traditional menus here that are visible. So the file menu, the view menu, etc. are not visible by default. You have to actually turn them on yourself. So you can click on this button and click show classic menus and they will come back. Another feature, and this was also present in build 5048 but I didn't show it, is this details pane at the bottom, which is known as a preview pane on here, although it does show details, can be moved to the right hand side, like this. Now in Windows 8 and 10, it is on the side of the window like this. In Vista and 7, it's on the bottom, like this. It's interesting, in this build of Longhorn, you have the option for either. You can have it whatever you like. If you go to control panel, the category view has slightly changed from build 5048. It looks a lot cleaner now. You can also obviously switch to classic view if you like. In classic view, things are no longer automatically grouped. They just appear in a big list like this. You also have some new options, for example, this auxiliary display option, which opens this window. There's also an option called programs. We have some different selections here, so you can add programs, show you a list of your installed programs and installed updates, but again, like in build 5048, these are all empty. I don't quite know how this works, this add a program. Do you have to put a disk in and then it comes up? I don't, I don't know. It also links you back to your games explorer, which I guess is quite useful. Now if you choose a game, you get this option called hardware that pops up at the top. If you click it, you go to this hardware location. And it's kind of like the one in Vista and 7, but it just it's kind of like a bit messy. And these links don't work here. Now along similar lines to the control panel, there are a few new wizards, what are called aero wizards in this build. One of them is for new shortcuts. So you get this new aero style wizard. 
There's also one for mapping network locations, which is here. There's also a change to the search user interface in this build. It now looks like this, with a nice purple colour. Now you may remember in build 504.8 I showed you what was known as the Windows Event Reporting Console and it was launched by putting this command in. If you do the same thing in beta 1, it's pretty much exactly the same as in build 504.8 but the wording on the options is just slightly different. Now lastly there's one more thing in this build which is curious and interesting. If you launch this it takes you to a program called Safe Docs which looks like a precursor to the backup and restore center. So you have options here to start automatic backups. And you can change the settings here, although these links don't work. You can set it to remind you to do a backup at different times. And you can choose some options here. If you go back to the main screen, there's also an option to recover files which looks like this. So you can view recoverable files and seemingly they come up here. You can also recover specific files and folders or recover all files and folders so that these links don't work. And there's also an option for manual backups which is greyed out so you can't access that. Finally, this build of Longhorn also includes the option to fix startup problems when booted from the CD, much like was seen in Windows Vista and Windows 7 and later versions of Windows. Other than that, these are the only significant changes and features I've noticed in this build. As always, if you have used this build yourself and you notice anything that I've missed, please let us know in the comments below and I will add annotations to the video as appropriate. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.